Hey guys, now we're going to look at the last type of homogeneous recurrence relations and this is complex roots. So the first thing we're going to look at is this formula here. It says that if you have cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n, well that can be rewritten as cos n theta plus i sine n theta. Alright, so all that's happening is the n is coming before the theta, so you just drop it in here and there. And that's how we get this form here. And we're going to use that later on. So let's take an example. You have 7 plus 9i. Exam this is a root. So we got this as a root of an equation. So now we have to um, find some formulas that will assist us to find the complex roots. So the root for this, you have x and y. The x is the value without an imaginary or i value and y is the part with the i. So this is y and this is x. So x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 9 in this case. Alright, there's also a formula that z is equal to x plus i y and z is equal to r cos theta plus i sine theta and r is the square root of x plus y squared. So x squared plus y squared all of under square root you get r which is here and theta is equal to tan inverse y over x or tan theta equals to y over x alright so what does this mean and we can combine this formula and that formula to get that x plus i y is equal to r cos theta plus i sin theta but why do we use this well if you have this example here 7 plus 9 i so we have 7 plus 9 i well you can rewrite that as well first of all you're gonna have to find r which is r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and this is equal to 7 squared plus 9 squared over square root and that is equal to the square root of 49 plus 81 and that is the same as the square root of we have 1 130 okay so now we know what r is and theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x so y over x which is equal to tan inverse of 9 over 7 again I'm not sure if these values will ever work but I'm just using it as an example so we have that the square root of 130 times cos of tan inverse so you have cos of tan inverse of 9 over 7 plus i sine tan inverse of 9 over 7 alright so here's the procedure to how to solve these problems so you're gonna have an equation as always you're gonna divide by the lowest a n so that's the first step and that will lead to an a quadratic equation from there you find the roots and if it's a complex root then you you'll have to use minus b plus minus the square root of b squared plus 4ac divided by 2a and that will give you your roots all right so you find the roots and if they're complex you're going to have an i in the answer and now if they're distinct so distinct you're gonna use this formula here if they're the same or repeated you're gonna use this formula here and it's exactly the same formula from the previous two videos so if it's distinct you're gonna have a n is equal to a times r1 to the power of n plus b times r2 which is the root second root to the power of n however if they're the same you have a n is equal to a times r1 to the power of n plus n 
uh, times b times r1 to the power of n. So the only difference is we have this n over here. And now since we have the imaginary part in our equation, we need to get rid of it to be able to solve the recurrence relation. So you have x plus i y, which is the root, it's at least one of the roots. Um, you're going to have to solve it in this terms, where just like we did like two minutes ago, you're going to have to sub it into this formula here. Alright, so you're going you're gonna to do that for both of your roots. So R1 and R2 if they're mm -hmm. distinct. And you're going to find the for this form here. Then you're going to replace it in your formula. So your R1 will take on this form. So R1 will take on this form and R2 will take on that form as well, depending on the answer that you get. So again, R1, if they're the same, then R1 will be replaced by whatever you get from here. And R1 is the same thing. And then you're going to simplify uh, this equation. So you're going to simplify this equation or that equation to get rid of the imaginary part. Then you're going to use the conditions that you're given from the question for A0 and A1 to find A and B. So we're going to use A0, A1 to find A and B. And again, this is A and this is B. And that's it. We're done. So in the next video, I'll be showing you how to actually deal with a problem uh, for complex roots and recurrence relation. And we c we're going to use this exact same procedure to solve it. Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.